Tiffany. Today, we're going to talk about factoring. Factoring trinomials. Application. Some things to keep in mind. When you factor a trinomial, you are undoing the foiling process. You will need to know how to calculate the factors of a whole number to factor a trinomial. Your answer will be in the format of two binomials being multiplied by each other. You may also have a GCF that is factored out of the trinomial as well. You can check your answer to see if what you got is correct by multiplying all of your terms back together. Before we do a problem that involves a factoring, how about we calculate the volume of this rectangular prism? Now, if you remember, the formula used to calculate the volume of a rectangular prism is volume equals length times width times height. So x plus 12 is one of our dimensions, 10 is one of our dimensions, and x plus 4 is one of our dimensions. What you need to do is take all of these points and multiply them by each other. So I'm going to write that like 10 times x plus 12 times x plus 4. Now, if I multiply all these together, I'm going to end up with the volume of this prism. I'm going to first start by working with my two binomials. I have the x plus 12 and the x plus 4. So if you remember, to do that, you're going to FOIL, first outer inner last, or the way I really prefer to think of it is as distributing twice. So I'm going to distribute my x over to the two terms in the second set of parentheses. Then I'm going to distribute the 12 over to the two terms in the set of parentheses. And that would follow all of the steps of foiling. So I have x times x, and that gives me x squared. And then I have x times 4, and that gives me 4x. And then I have 12 times x, and I'm making my arrow um, go down below because it'll make my um, arrows not look overly cluttered. 12 times x would be 12x. And then 12 times 4 would be 48. Now, I'm going to remember to write this 10. Remember, I had a 10 on the outside, and I chose not to work with it yet, but I do want to bring it down. Now, I'm going to simplify everything that's inside my parentheses that I can so I'm going to rewrite the 10 again, put my parentheses, and I have an x to the second power, and I don't have any other x's to the second power, so I'm just going to rewrite that part. Then I have a 4x and I have a 12x, so I'm going to add those two things together and get 16x. Then I'm going to end up with a plus 48. Now I can work with the 10 that's on the outside, and what I'm going to do is just distribute the 10 to all three terms. I'm going to distribute the 10 to the x squared, then I'm going to distribute the 10 to the 16x, and then I'm going to distribute the 10 to the 48. When I do that, I get 10x squared, and then I'm going to add that to 160x, and then I'm going to add that to 480. Now I have multiplied all three parts of this particular formula. I've multiplied the length times the width times the height, and this is my final answer. The only thing I need to do is make sure I add my units, and down here the problem tells me that my measurements are in inches, so I know that this means this is inches cubed. Remember when we're dealing with volume, your exponent is always going to be a three because we just multiplied three separate sides. So that means your units are measured in a 3D dimension. That means there's three parts to it. So the final answer for this problem is 10x squared plus 160x plus 480 inches cubed. Now let's take a look at a problem that actually has us undo this scenario. We're going to work backwards. So this problem asks us, what are the side lengths of this rectangular prism? And the first thing I think is, well, they've given us the volume. It's written down here, 2x squared minus 28x plus 66. And what I basically need to do is factor that down into three separate lengths, OK? Three different parts need to come from this because the volume for a rectangular prism is calculated with the formula v equals length times width times height. So what I need to do is say, hmm, how can I break this trinomial down? The first thing I notice is there are three terms 
and all three of the whole numbers that are in the terms are all even. That means I should be able to at least factor out a two. This is when you're factoring by finding a GCF or a greatest common factor. So I'm gonna start by rewriting my trinomial up at the top. 2x squared minus 28x plus 66. Now to pull out the value of two, I'm basically like undoing the distributive property. Remember if we had like a two out here and this whole trinomial was inside parentheses, you would take that two and distribute it to each term, okay? Well, what I'm doing is reversing that. I'm taking a two out of each term. So I'm gonna say, if I were to take a two out of this, which means divide this term, the two X squared, by two, then I would be left with just x squared, okay? And I'm gonna put my two out here. This is the two that I'm taking out. And then I need to take out a two out of this 28, and that would leave me with 14x. And then I need to take a two out of this 66, and that would leave me with 33, okay? So what I just did was find a GCF, that means something that could come out of all three terms. Now I'm gonna turn my trinomial that's inside the parentheses into two binomials by factoring. If you remember, when you're factoring a trinomial, you're going to look at the last term in the trinomial and say, what two factors can I break 33 down into that will add together to give me this middle term, the 14? I'm gonna start by listing all my factors and that's one times 33 and then it's Two doesn't go in there, but three does. It's three times 11. Four doesn't go into it evenly. Five doesn't go into it evenly. Six doesn't go into it evenly. Seven doesn't go into it evenly. Eight doesn't go into it evenly. Nine doesn't go into it. 10 doesn't. And 11 does, but we already have it written right here. So that's my cue to know it's time to stop. And I've listed all the factors of 33. But I want to point out something. If you think about it, two negative numbers do equal a positive. So one times 33 is not the only way that you could write those two numbers to get 33. You could also write it as negative one times negative 33, and that could give you 33. And you can also write negative three times negative 11, and that would give you 33, okay? So now what I want you to consider is out of all four of these, which pair of factors would give you the negative 14? You do wanna consider the fact that there is a subtraction sign here and consider your 14 as being a negative 14. So when I look at my one times 33, if I add that together, that's 34, so that's way too big. Three plus 11 would be 14. That's kinda of on the right track, but it's positive, so that's wrong. So I'm actually gonna skip this next one and cross it out because I know that's gonna be wrong as well. And because this last one was three, plus 11, that gave me 14. I'm pretty sure it's gonna be the negative version, and it is. That means negative three minus 11 is gonna give me negative 14. So this is a set of factors that I'm gonna use. So as far as the trinomial that's inside the parentheses, I'm going to rewrite it as two binomials, and these two factors, the negative three and negative 11, are what I'm gonna use to help me create those binomials. So I'm gonna start by rewriting the two, and then I'm gonna write my parentheses for the two binomials. Remember, the two just gets brought down. We can't forget about it, um, but we don't need to really do anything with it right now. So I'm just rewriting it so it doesn't get lost on accident. So I'm gonna write an X at the beginning of that parentheses, an X at the beginning of this parentheses, and then I'm gonna plug in this information. I have a negative three to plug in, so that's the same thing as saying minus three. And then the other binomial is just gonna have a negative 11, which is the same thing as saying minus 11. So I have just broken down this trinomial into three terms. I knew that I was gonna end up being in three terms because I can see that I need three terms. I need a length, a width, and a height. So in this case, I can see that one of my dimensions is two, and let's just say it's this one, this little lower piece that's like touching the floor, I guess you could say, is a two value. And one of my dimensions is gonna be x minus three. So let's say it's this one. And then another dimension is gonna be x minus 11, okay? So now, 
if I wanted to check my answer to make sure I did everything correctly, what I would do is start from this step where all three of my terms are being multiplied together to make sure that my length times my width times my height does in fact give me this original volume that they told me. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna check and make sure it's right. So I have two and my X minus three and my X minus 11. So I'm gonna deal with just the binomials first. And remember, I'm going to FOIL, which is the same thing as distributing twice. So my X gets multiplied by the X, and then the X gets multiplied by the 11, and then the three gets multiplied by the X, and then the three gets multiplied by the 11. So now that's X squared minus 11X minus three X plus 33. And I'm gonna close my parentheses. Now I'm going to combine everything that I can that's inside my parentheses and I can see that I have two single x terms. So this is 2x squared minus 14x plus 33. Now I'm going to distribute my 2 across everything. Remember how in the beginning we basically undid that process? We undistributed by factoring out that GCF of 2. So what that would look like is the 2 times the x squared, the 2 times the negative 14x, and the 2 times the 33. So 2x squared is the answer to the first one. And then that would be minus 28x. And then 2 times the 33 would be a plus 66. So is that the same thing that I started out with? Yes, it is. So what does that mean? It means I got my answer correct. Hopefully this particular video helped you out. It helps you understand that when you are calculating the volume of a rectangular prism, you're going to use length times width times height. And then to undo that, meaning you start with the volume, if you were wanting to calculate the lengths of the three separate sides, you would factor down that trinomial, meaning you need to break it down into three terms that are gonna to multiply together to get that answer. Now let's take a recap. When you factor a trinomial, you are undoing the foiling process. You will need to know how to calculate the factors of a whole number to factor a trinomial. Your answer will be in the format of two binomials being multiplied by each other. You may also have a GCF that's factored out of a trinomial as well. You can check your answer to see if what you got is correct by multiplying all of your terms back together. SuperEasyMath.com don't forget to like and subscribe. Did you find this video helpful? You can support this channel by donating to Super Easy Math through PayPal. There's a link to it in the description section below this video and on the Super Easy Math YouTube cover photo.